Hello all, in this particular tutorial we will learn how to perform point in time restore on SQL Server. This particular tutorial is for the beginners. Now let's understand the backup strategy that we have got. So every Sunday we are taking a full backup, every day we are taking a differential backup and then every 30 minutes we are taking the log backup. Now I have not shown all the log backups. But this is just an example. So now here, you, you as usual, you have taken a full backup on Sunday. Then you have taken a differential backup on Monday. Then on Tuesday morning, 6 a.m., you took the log backup one. And on Tuesday at 6.30 a.m., after half an hour, you took the log backup two. However, however, before you took the second log backup, a disaster occurred at 6.20. So even before you took the second log backup, the disaster occurred. Disaster can be anything. Somebody dropped a table. Somebody deleted a whole lot of, lot of records. Somebody dropped the database. Would you be able to restore your database to just before the disaster occurs? And, we, and here I'm saying 6.15. But if you know for sure the disaster occurred at 6.20, then you can probably go back until 6.19. That's the point in time recovery. So point in time recovery allows you to restore your database just before the failure, just before the failure. Now, these are the recovery models in the SQL. So there is a simple recovery model. There is a full recovery model. There is a bulk recovery model. In simple, no log backup happens. And hence, you cannot do point in time recovery. You can only recover until the end of full backup. In the full full recovery model, you can take the log backups and then you can recover to any point in time provided you have all the backups. Bulk logged also needs log backups. However, you can perform the recovery until the end of any kind of backup, the log backup or the full backup. You cannot perform the point in time. Now, to perform the point in time recovery, you have two options. You can use the stop at clause in the, uh, in the restore command. So in the T SQL, you specify the stop at clause. That's your option number one. I'm going to show you both. And the option number two is you can use the GUI. And here you can click on the timeline and you can choose specific date and time and what time you want to restore. So now that we have seen the this all of this, let's go ahead and connect to our database. So here, let me so here you can see that I've connected to my SQL database using SSMS and I'm doing this particular tutorial on 2022 as you can see. However, the exact same steps will work on 2019, 2016 or any other edition. The recovery steps have not changed. The point in time recovery steps have not changed since so many versions. Now that we have seen this, let's close this window. I, I do not have Let's see if I have a database called demo. So this is the database that we'll be using demo point in time. So let's create this particular database. That's done. Let's refresh this. And we can see that we have a new empty database. And since this database is just created, if I go to the, the, the tables, you see that there are no tables. So let's go ahead and create a table called employee. And that's done. And if I now refresh, here, I should be able to see a new table called employee. And since we just created that particular table, it will be empty. And you can see that we do not have any records in that particular table. That's good. So now let's close this. And what we are going to do is we are going to connect to that particular database and we are going to insert some employee records. So we are going to insert some employee records. So I'm what I'm going to do, I'm going to demonstrate the full backup, differential backup, log backup one, log backup two. I'm going to demonstrate this particular scenario. And before taking the log backup two, I'm going to delete all the records. I'm going to delete all the records. And then and then after deleting, I'm going to take the log backup. And then we will see if we are able to restore. So a full backup, differential backup, first log backup, second log backup. But before taking the second log backup, a disaster already occurred. So let's insert the first record. So as, as you already know that this is an empty table and let's insert first record. So the first employee called rock joins our organization. As you can see, he had joined our organization. And uh, what we are going to do now is we are going to take the first backup of our database. 
So that's done. So we have taken the first backup. And now if I, before, let's see, and you can see there is a backup that happened. The next part is we are going to, we are going to insert a second employee. So give it a minute. So what time we took? 7.33. So give few seconds. So exactly, at, okay, no need to wait. So we can do this continuously. So we now have the second employee. The So now we have got two employees. So this is the first employee was before the backup. Second employee joined before the differential backup. So now that the, we have got two employees, rock and water, let's go ahead and take the differential backup. So you can see this is a differential backup. So I'm going to take the differential backup. That's done. So we have got a differential backup. Now let's insert one more record in our table, which will be the third employee called air. So now we got three employees in our organization, rock, water and air. So we got three employees in our organization and this record is before taking the for log backup. So let's now take the log backup. And as you can see, we only have the full backup. We don't have the log backup. So let's go ahead and take the log backup. Right now, there are three employees, rock, water, and air. Right now, there are three employees. So let's go ahead and, and take the log backup. So that's done. And now if I go and click on the properties, you can see we have a log backup for our database as well. Now what, hap what exactly happened is like some one deleted all the records from employees somebody deleted so that's gone and now if i say select start from employee nothing is there nothing is there and people have not realized this people have not realized and people think that let's say a new employee joins our organization so uh, the, the the we at this moment we have we have a full backup we have a differential backup, we have log backup one. We don't have log backup two. And before taking the log backup two, a disaster already has happened. So that is no record in the employee. People have not realized this as of now. So a new employee called Flower joins our organization. So this is the employee ID four. And now if I select star from employee, you can see there is only one employee. And when people find out, when they try to find out, okay, now I got four employees. Let me see how many employees I've got. And they realize that I have only one employee. All of my previous employees are gone. They are no longer part of my organization. Somebody has, they are still part of my organization, but somebody had deleted those records. And that's when we need to, we need to restore our database just before this disaster. And remember, we don't have the second log backup. So let's go ahead and take the second log backup. So that's done. Now, we, what we are going to do is there are multiple options. As I told you, we can re use the restore stop at clause or we can use the, the GUI option. Let me show you the GUI option and I'm going to show you both. So let's close this and let's close this as well. So right now, and I'm going to say new query. And right now we have got only one employee called flower. We don't have the three employees, rock, water, and air. Those are gone. Those are literally gone from my organization. So let's go and say, right click on this. Let's click on a task. Let's say restore the, then you'll choose the database. And here, here it, it actually gives us all the databases. So you can see a full differential transaction log, transaction log. You need to be aware of what time the disaster occurred. You need to be aware of that. So let's think that a disaster occurred at 7.35. So the disaster occurred at 7.35. So what I'm going to say is I'm going to say timeline and specific date and time. And I'm going to say restore my database at 7.35. So this is when this this is the time when I'm going to restore my database. Now, if I click on OK, if I click on OK, then let's see what exactly happens. So it's say OK. So here you can see that I've still not restored. So it just says restore to this particular location. Let's generate this particular script to new query window. And you can see here what it does. And I'm going to show it to you carefully. Watch this. So first it takes a final backup. So it takes a final backup. Then it it actually restores the full backup. Then it restores the differential backup. Then it also restores the, the first transaction. It also restores the second, but there would be a stop at clause. This is what I was talking about. There will be a stop at clause. And here, this is the time when we are telling that stop at this particular point. 
at this particular point do not go beyond this particular point and i would like to show you that i have only one employee my three employees are gone so now let's before doing this let me put because there will be a connection to this particular database so let's put this let's put this alter uh, database and i'm going to show you what is this so this particular this particular option shows that we are going to take the we are going to put the database in single user mode so that if there are any connections it will prevent us so it will disconnect the existing connection and it will take the database in single user mode and then we are going to take the log backup we are going to restore a full backup differential backup so let's let me put this full backup differential backup first log backup second log backup but when it does the second log backup there is a stop at clause so let's take all of these commands let's take all of these commands and let's hit the execute and I, I would like to show you that all of my employees are gone so let's do this and if everything goes as per the plan if everything goes per and let's see and looks like all the script is completed so the query executed successfully now if i if i take if i take this select star if i connect to the database new query and if i say select star from employee then i have rock water and air now what exactly happened the fourth employee is gone because we went back to the time so we need to find a way of all the changes that happened after this particular restore we need to be able to put that back into the database but at least we have got the previous employees and we were able to perform our restore so let me repeat so what we did we used we went to the database we said task we said restore we said database then we choose the timeline what timeline we want we chose the timeline and then we generated the script and we saw what that script is doing and then we put the database into single user mode and we allowed that script to run and when that particular script ran then we were able to get all of our employees back into our database so this was a quick introduction on how to perform point in time restore a point in time restore allows us to go back to specific time so we went to a particular time when we had complete data i hope this particular tutorial was useful i hope you learned something new today I, and again if you do like the videos that i'm uploading if you do like the content that i'm uploading then make do hit the like button and make sure to subscribe my channel till then thank you and see you in next tutorial bye bye